Hey there, Falcon fans. This is Stickster. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about Unison in Falcon and how it works. There are many different types of Unison that you can use, and I'm going to tour you uh, through several of the methods and how you might use them to spice up patches in different ways. The first one that I'm going to show you is probably the simplest and the one I think most people are probably uh, used to. That is the unison that comes with certain oscillators. Now I have, for example, a simple uh, mono saw here. All right, so just a simple bass patch. And as you can see, the unison mode is essentially off. And the way you know this is because unison is set to one voice only. Now, as we play through these, I'm going to have you check out the CPU meter that's down here at the bottom of the Falcon display, because the way that uh, CPU usage will be affected changes based on the unison mode that you're using. Now, the simplest unison mode that comes with these oscillators is actually the least CPU hungry, and so it is a good choice for a lot of uses. And what's going to happen is you'll see that as I play this actual, this patch, watch the CPU meter. Right, so as that patch is playing, there's only about 2.5% CPU's usage, and a lot of that is coming from, uh, a lot of that is coming from these effects that are happening over the program. If I turn those off, it'll be very quiet, but you can watch how different the CPU usage is going to be. All right, so barely a percent or so. I'm going to turn those back on just so you know that, you know, a good 1% of that or more, maybe 1.5% of CPU usage came from these effects. All right, so right back up there about uh, in the 2.5% range or so. Now, as I shift the unison voices up, it is an additive process where I am superimposing different instances of the oscillator of uh, sound over top of itself. So what I'm adding is basically five voices of this same saw pad. And I have the opportunity to adjust some things in mono mode, like the detuning. If the detuning is zero, the waveforms are going to uh, overhang each other. And in fact, in this case, what's happened is you're hearing cancellation, phase cancellation between these waves because they are starting at different points uh, in their cycle. And so at times, the phases, can, uh, the phases cancel out and you get a, a very weak patch as a result. So detuning allows us to get rid of that effect. So some of the bass is coming back. And if we really increase this, great. Now we've got a much different sound because the, uh, the tuning of each of those saw waves is slightly different. And across a uh, 29 or 30% detuning, uh, what it means is that those waves are going to occupy space of 30% of uh, the tuning or 30% of a semitone across the whole, sp the whole collection of those waves. Great. Also, I should point out that if you watch the CPU meters, I play with these five voices. The CPU meter is barely higher than it was with just one, and that's because Falcon is very smart about how it superimposes these waves. It does some uh, pre-calculation that ensures that this, as the voices get thicker, that uh, it is not affecting uh, the uh, CPU usage. It's not a, it is not a hungry um, effect for unison here. If I turn stereo on... <laughs> You'll notice CPU usage is a little higher, but not much. It was about 3.3%. So again, this is a very uh, power efficient way to do Unison. Um, and of course, within Unison, we also get the ability to change the stereo spread so it could be very little or very high. All right, so that is a little bit about the simplest form of Unison. Let's look at another type of unison now. This one is offered by the event processors that you can run at the layer level over any patch. So I have a simple vibraphone bell here. Great. 
And if we want to add Unison uh, to this particular program, we are not going to be able to do that from the analog stack because that is not part of the built-in functions. Of course, we could build up a bunch of oscillators and then detune them slightly, uh, but that is a lot of work. And when we're talking about using uh, sine waves in this in this case, it might not be as effective as we want. Again, there's those phasing issues and so forth. So what I'm going to do is go to the event processors in the layer level. I'm going to go to script processor, and I am going to add the uh, effect of unison. And by default, I'll be assigned five voices and a detuning amount. I'm going to turn the detuning up. I'll turn this off so you, again, you can hear the patch before and after. So clearly this is not really altering the patch in any way. Uh, there are no uh, opportunities here to change the stereo uh, modulation that's happening for this patch from within the script processor itself, but it does uh, duplicate the voices however many times you want. In this case, we have five instances of that patch running, and they will be detuned across the range that's shown here. In other words, about 20 cents of difference across the whole range. And again, I'm going to play this without. Notice the CPU usage that happens when I'm just playing the patch. You notice there's quite a few voices and the CPU goes up to a couple percent. Now, if I turn this on, play the same thing. You can see that the CPU usage really spikes. So these five voices really become five independent voices. It's using the full range of CPU requirements from the key group multiplied five times. So clearly this is a less efficient way to do Unison, but you may have to use something like this if you are intending to provide Unison on top of a patch that's not using oscillators that have Unison built in. Now let's take a look at one other type of Unison. The last type of Unison I'm going to show you is also fairly CPU hungry, but it is also very flexible in terms of modulation and other things that you can do with Unison besides just pan and pitch. However, I'm going to show this example in terms of pan and pitch because it will then be easily understandable how it works. So here we have a simple, again, saw bass. All right, not much to it. I've turned off the unison uh, in the oscillator itself. You'll see that there's only one voice and therefore the detuning stereo are off. So none of that is going to matter. We just have the one tone. Now, the way to find the new unison that I'm going to show you is at the layer level again, and it's actually built in. If your Falcon is not showing the parameters menu, you will find this little dot control. And if you turn that on, the parameters menu will open up, including a unison parameter. So I'm going to open that up and uh, create five voices, and you're going to find that now the patch is going to be a lot louder. And that's because all of those voices are being activated at exactly the same time, unlike the unison mode that's built into the oscillator. So with that in mind, it means that the amplitude of the waveform is going to be multiplied at every point uh, along a cycle, and so it's going to be a lot louder. And therefore, if you're going to use this, you probably want to turn down the gain as I've done here with the oscillators. Now, in order to demonstrate what this unison mode is capable of, I'm going to use it as a modulator. And so if I go to the key group layer, uh, for example, I can apply a modulation from, uh, from unison. If I go down to external, other, unison, and this is at 100% modulation, so it will be uh, establishing the voices all the way from far left to far right. Of course, uh, there's not much happening in the stereo field that you can discern because they're all tuned the same, and therefore it's going to sound very much like a mono waveform. You're not going to hear any difference. Now, if I apply pitch uh, as a as a uh, source to modulate, again, I'm going to go to uh, other unison, uh, use that as the modulation source, and the destination is the pitch. And you'll see that right now we're modulating across one semitone. That's going to sound terrible. I'm going to turn it down a little bit. Now we should hear a nice fat sound across the whole stereo spectrum. Awesome. And just so I can prove to you that this worked, again, I'm going to turn the unison off. 
That's without, and then again, applying the voices. All right. These are not the only ways that you can apply unison. You can use unison as a modulator uh, for anything that's at the key group level. So your imagination can run wild. Uh, One other thing that I want to note is that you are not restricted to a bipolar use of unison. Um, I use that here so that the pitch would be both below and above the tuning of the uh, waveform and uh, all the way to the left and right uh, on the panning of the stereo spectrum. But I could also have chosen instead of a source of uh, instead of a source of, of unison, if I went to add modulation other, I'll find that there is a unipolar unison as well. So you can use this if you only want to modulate in one direction uh, across those voices. So with that in mind, I hope this gives you some great ideas for your next creation in Falcon. Until then, I hope you have a lot of fun with Falcon, and I'll see you next time.